Hello ladies and gentlemen, another video from Arthur. So today we are going to take a look into how to connect your GitHub account to your uh, VS Code in the cloud. So in the last video, we have set up an instance on Google Cloud Server uh, with your VS Code running so that you can basically have a dev environment in pretty much any uh, circumstances. Uh, so today we're going to take a look into how to extend this, expand your environment with uh, hooking your GitHub account and all your repositories to your VM so that you can work with your code. Yeah, let's dive in. So as you can see on my screen, uh, I have already my VS Code Ubuntu running and this gives me basically uh, my VS Code environment already in place. So this pop-up that you just saw is appearing because you're, you might be switching between tabs and connection is, uh, well, it, it loses connection basically. So it needs to reconnect each time you need to open uh, each time you're opening this tab. It doesn't really matter, so it doesn't break your environment. It doesn't break your coding experience really, so it's just how it is basically. So first thing first, so um, if you don't have an account on GitHub, you can create one very simply. Uh, so before we will get back to this window, I will show you on the GitHub side uh, what you're gonna need to do. So if you have an account, you probably know how to do these things already. Uh, but if you don't, you register and then you will need to go to settings, SSH and GPG keys. And we will need to add a new SSH key here so that basically our um, development environment or our operating system basically will be connected with our GitHub account and you will not need to provide any password right so that what this is needs for uh so now if we go back to our vs code we will need to generate an ssh key and in um, unix systems there is a very simple command for that so ssh key gen so you run this command it will prompt you with a couple of uh, questions um, one is uh, what is the file name that you want to go with i suggest you go with default because it will read it automatically the system knows uh, where to look for the id rsa file and then it will also prompt you with the passphrase that you can attach to your key so that will be additional extra password basically but i suggest for now just keep it um, blank and confirm it's blank so that will generate the SSH key for your user under this system. So now what you can do, you can cat uh, is a command uh, to get quickly the content of the file. So we can get content of this SSH key from, uh, from your home directory. So for example, if you do this, so tilde is your home directory. And if you, type tilde slash dot SSH folder is generated once you've run the key gen command. And then inside of this folder, we should have IDRSA files. And from this point, it's very important to take the content of IDRSA pub file, not the uh, file without an extension because uh, dot pub file is public key that you share to other tools and services and id rsa file without extension is your private key so it should be kept on your system uh, in your system okay so we can uh, cat this and we can copy this key here uh, and we will add it to the github so as i mentioned uh, so you can put whatever title you want it doesn't really matter so we can call it like um I don't know, uh, GC uh, VS code, whatever, um, Ubuntu. Okay, and we will paste our key over here. Before I qu click um, add SSH key, I want to show you something. So if we go back here to our IDE, and actually, hold on, if I go back to my profile, and open this in a new tab. So let's imagine we don't have a key right now, okay? Well, we don't have it actually. 
So if I open one of my repositories and I want to clone it, so we copy this SSH clone or download link. And if we go back and in my folder right now, if I try to git clone this URL, uh, it will say that permission denied public key is not recognized because we didn't synced our SSH keys from our system to GitHub, right? So, and now if I go back to SSH keys and add this SSH key, SSH, SSH, uh, and if I go back and do the same command again, as you can see, it did download the repository. Uh, so if I now check out the folder, we have AF blog over here. So my application, my repository was cloned to my local environment. So now I can navigate to this uh, blog application folder. This is JavaScript application. So in order to get it running, I need to run a command called npm install to install all dependencies and uh, packages my application needs for um, for development so that should not take too long so what i'm going to show you is uh, that it's possible to run your application in a dev um, mode and see the result at the same time as editing code um, so there we go it's installed uh, so because we currently cloned our repository into our system, uh, let's open this um, application code base. Um, so if I go home, Frank Arthur um, for YouTube video, AF blog okay so it will reload the uh, browser tab and now we have our vs code with with uh, our application code in place okay so if i open terminal now in here uh, and i switch my user to frank arthur 303 Okay, so now we have like an almost normal project uh, like you would have in your uh, uh, on your laptop or your PC um, and we have like full um, structure here so you can edit code but how do you run your dev environment so that you can see your application running while you're developing uh, so in my case, because this is an, um, a JavaScript application, I can run command, which will spin up a server on localhost for my application. But basically, if you're using any other languages like, I don't know, PHP, C Sharp, Python, whatever, as far as you can run on this uh, Ubuntu um, operating system, uh, any server with localhost, which will exposing localhost under certain uh, poor, you can do the same thing basically. If you know how to set up your environment, you will be able to do exactly the same thing as I'm doing. So you will be able to expose your local host to your IP. I will show you this in a second. So I have a command uh, for this application, which is called docs dev. So that will spin up a dev server on local host port 8080. And once this is done, I will show you uh, that it's super easy to actually access your application. So as you can see, it's successfully running my application right now on localhost 8080 there, okay? So now if I go and copy uh, my IP address, okay? And if I open new, new tab, and paste that um, IP address and put port 8080. This opens my application, which is currently running on my 
uh, Visual Studio uh, VM, uh, just simple like as that. So basically what we can do now, we can, for example, update homepage. So if I put hello here and save, if we go to the page, you can see hello there. But more than that, I can show you how cool the process can be actually on an iPad, the development process. So if I close this tab, I keep my code over here. What I can do, I can open another Safari window like that and run a mobile app, for example, and I will have live edit. So like blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that should appear without any reloads. You will see the result over there. Um, another thing is you can uh, open another window. Uh, let me remember how to do that. Okay, hold on. So if I split screen, this is another option by the way, because in that split screen mode, you will see the uh, full window of your code and full window of your application. But what is more interesting is that you can spin up another another Safari window and run your application over there. So you have your desktop app, your mobile app, and you have got your code on a separate window. So you can scroll between those like that. And isn't that cool? So you basically edit your code as normal, like hello from YouTube video recording. Okay, uh, we save that, we go to our application and ta-da, on both you can see your results mobile and desktop version, or you can run one uh, at the same time. So it's up to you basically, but that's the option. That's the opportunity there. Obviously you will say, okay, we need a console. We need some other stuff for debugging, etc. This process can be improved. I agree. Uh, so this is just a one small step forward to show you the uh, potential of this setup. Uh, if you're interested, more likes, shares and comments, and we can basically expand this uh, to, towards basically having a proper, full, secure uh, development environment for, uh, for devs basically, where you can do all the debuggings, all the runnings, we can go through the deployments and how to uh, actually create a uh, project from scratch and push to your repositories and, and so on and so forth. So the ability of this thing is actually very, very high. You can do pretty much like a normal development on this. And uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting. So if you, if you are curious uh, to know more about this and uh, you're interested in seeing this going forward with more steps, with more, um, extended features, etc. we can take a look deeper into these setups uh, in later videos. All right, that's it for now. So I really hope you enjoyed that. So uh, if you did, please comment and uh, like this video. Uh, also subscribe if you wish. And yeah, see you in the next one. Cheers.